Our newest member, Sabine, is still healing from our wood chopping accident. We've not got time to waste though, as we have momentum. We learn terraforming to be able to fill in the small holes we have been making from mining clay. We'll want some wooden walls too, so the enemies can't just swim into our enclave once the water's in. The next day we make more big changes. A limestone bridge connecting the new river tower to the rest of our fortifications. We'll now refer to this tower as the East Avon Connection Bridge Tower. Using the blueprint for bid function, I queue up some mining below these columns, as we will be mining out a path for the water in the future, and those limestone pillars will be inside the water. The gods seem keen to remind us not to forget our humble beginnings. They're telling us not to forget the hunting tower and the unfinished, hidden underground tunnel. All in due time, however, as there was a castle, a moat and towers to be finished. It's perhaps time that we build a stall for our visiting merchants. Now that we have linen again, we can begin to decorate with banners. We began to run out of limestone and that was Johnny's time to relax and do some fishing, followed by some hunting. Johnny was about to hunt a pack of wolves when the mountain bandits made a surprise attack. They were all melee fighters, making this an easy fight.
It was an easy victory. Good target practice, courtesy of the mountain bandits. Johnny was able to finish his wolf hunt and he was having a great summer so far. Mary did the boring trap resetting alone, but she didn't mind as Johnny had earned a break. Just when Johnny's summer couldn't get better, a wild bear appeared, this time a fully mature mammoth worthy of his skill. A few days pass of summer work and I finally get round to adding some paths in the interior of the fort for faster travelling. The castle kitchen is almost finished so it seems a good time to learn cooking. We can now build a stove, allowing us to make lavish meals, as well as the option to pickle vegetables. I set it to be built with limestone, and we're all out of that, so I manually have Dudok and Gwen focus on mining some local limestone until we have enough. Avota's bartering skills continue to astound the community at East Avon. It seems like Avota could sell a cow its own milk back. The limestone aesthetic doesn't quite look right in this perfectly crafted red brick interior. I will try limestone brick I guess, but I soon change my mind again later and go with clay bricks. The chickens we buy from our neighbouring towns never seem to survive. Our only guess is that they starve before being roped into the pen. We can now begin to plan out the Great Hall. It's uplifting to see the castle progressing so beautifully. All we need now is four wall torches. I place six just to be sure. I suspect it's going to look amazing when it's finished. Thankfully, Sabine is helping with the animal handling now. Five wild boars. Perhaps this is something Johnny and Mary would be interested in. Evota bartering limestone brick has allowed Johnny to almost finish the connection bridge for the River Connection Bridge Tower.
Our food stores are looking quite full and we have even began to use the castle ones. And so begins our gradual move to the castle. It is soon autumn, which means the summer clothes come off and the winter back on. I prioritise those with the chilli tray. Gwen has been doing an amazing job of keeping us clothed in fine clothing. It's also time to close the windows once again. I plan out a tunnel from the cellar to the farm to give a more direct route for seeds to farm and vice versa. I finally make the decision and get a clay brick stove planned for the kitchen. I suspect this kitchen is going to look incredible when it's done. will soon be in, I think. I am sure our splendid castle will attract attention of the unwanted kind, and so I decide to learn defensive structures too, allowing us to make deadly metal traps. These flimsy stick traps can go and in with the iron. Below the castle is lots of silver to be mined. I'll need to do that carefully, but it will also help make our food storage a little bit cooler. So let's try and make a kitchen that Athelstan would want to live in. It's a bit warm here, but it should get colder as we add structures above, providing more insulating layers from the outside weather. I build very high priority shelves that hold meat, veg and herbs in the kitchen, allowing fast access to common cooking ingredients. Our traps are plentiful, but we can always do with more. We 
we'll need at least two pottery shelves to officially make this a kitchen, giving it a production bonus for food preparation. The kitchen was almost done when we were interrupted by an assault from the looters. This would be their last rainy day.
We took many wounded, but we were gradually able to progress with the kitchen. We had survived another bloody battle. We would need time to heal before the next episode, where we hopefully finish the castle. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.